To import a wallet, the first thing we're going to do is import network pocket.eth and pocket ETH, as well as our wallet, or import our wallets. When we first get started, we want to create a couple of variables with uh, pocket ETH, wallet, and the app, app or I'm sorry, app context. Now that we've done that, we need to create, we need to initialize the pocket Ethereum class, or plugin, I'm sorry. To do that, we actually need to define the network ID as well as call the pocket ETH, our pocket ETH class, our instance, sorry. Before we get started, we need to now initialize our pocket Ethereum instance. We do that by creating a parameter for net IDs. And as you can see here, we got started with net ID and then we added the pocket ETH network, ring fee, and get IDs. In this case, we already defined a lot of the different subnetworks for us. So if you don't know, all you have to do is just type in like for, for in our case, ring fee, mainnet, and it will, we can use the get net ID to obtain the actual number value. So we don't have to, kind of makes it easier where we don't have to do that. Next, we're gonna call our pocket ETH variable again, new pocket ETH. Now we're gonna have a couple parameters that we have to define, which is the context, our developer ID, net ID, how many nodes we want to connect to, so max nodes, request timeouts, and our default network that we always want to keep connected to. So before I get too far in, the developer ID is actually a unique ID that's only given by the core developer team. To obtain that, we sent a link in the description to allow you to create a, or sign, on, sign up for the form, and then you'll be emailed your unique identifier. This helps us track the resources that are being used on network to help us prepare for a test net. For the sake of security as well, you wanna keep it private, just like a private key, so that's why we're gonna just leave this part blank. Now that we initialize our pocket ETH instance, we're actually going to import or use the import wallet feature from the SDK. To do so, we're gonna call our wallets variable again, pocket ETH, get rink B because our wallet is on the rink B network, as well as calling the import wallet function, which takes in the private key. So once the user import their private key, it will then have to be saved, or you don't necessarily have to do it, but we, we prefer you to use a password to encrypt it onto the local device. So we're going to do that by declaring our wallet class again, but we're gonna use the save function, as you can see down here. To do so, we're gonna call wallet, save, we're gonna enter in the passphrase, context, as well as declare our, our utilize our wallet persistent error handler just to make sure that we save and store the wallet correctly. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go on to creating a wallet. So to create a wallet, we're gonna do the similar steps that we did by importing, by, I'm sorry, importing a wallet. We're going to declare our three variables, pocket ETH, context, and wallets, as well as define the con context and initialize or instantiate our pocket Ethereum instance. Once we've done that, we're gonna use a new, instead of using the import wallet function, we're gonna use the create wallet. To do so, we're gonna call wallets, pocket ETH, get rink B because we wanna create a wallet on the rink B network. We're gonna call our create wallet function. What's unique about this function is, inside of it, we can actually do several things. If you wanted to, for your application, you can only call the address if you only want to display the address, or if you wanted to call the private key, function, it will only display the, display the private key. But since we want users to have access our visibility to both of them, we're gonna call both by doing exactly so in our UI field. We're gonna call wallet.getAddress and wallet.getPrivateKey, and that is what we, that's how we will render both our address in the top field and our private key in the bottom field. That's, so once we've done that, we wanna, obviously our, we wanna encrypt it securely by associating a passphrase with it, so we're gonna save our wallet let me find it. Again, by calling wallet.save, which takes in the passphrase, contact, and that's our context, and define our error handler. Now we're going to